Hello and welcome. I'm Steve Clemens, editor-at-large of The Hill. Thanks for joining us for our final day of a huge summit, the Sustainability Imperative, our three-day virtual journey to every corner of the sustainability sandbox or universe. We've been incredibly fortunate to have had a terrific group of speakers over the past two days, and we're going to continue the streak today with mayors, really cool mayors, members of Congress and industry leaders joining us. I'd like to thank our sponsors, the American Investment Council, the American Petroleum Institute, Consumer Brands Association, Xylem, Electric Last Mile Solutions, XL Fleet, and SAFE. SAFE is securing America's future energy, a great organization, for their support of this program. Just as we as we've been doing for the last two days, we'll be bringing you multiple sessions of programming, multiple tracks. You can watch them all. We give you breaks in between them uh, so that you can breathe like me, uh, or you can turn into specific segments. Go to our website, thehill.com backslash events for all of the details. The world will be observing Earth Day next week, a helpful reminder that there is still no planet B and there's no sustain and sustainability is clearly not an option, but an imperative. Once again, we will be starting things off with checking the temperature of planet Earth. The mayors of Miami and Phoenix, two leaders who are keenly aware of the ongoing impact of climate change on their cities, are just going to uh, join us in a few seconds. Before we get underway, a few housekeeping notes you can tweet us at, at The Hill Events, using the hashtag The Hill Sustainability. We're broadcasting live and take your questions through the program. And if you experience any trouble with your live stream, please refresh the page and that should be a quick fix. And now let's turn to our mayors. Mayor Kate Gallego is the mayor of Phoenix. I love Phoenix. Making Phoenix a leader in sustainability uh, has been one of the key policy objectives of her administration. And Mayor Francis Suarez, a regular on my shows, always great to see Francis, is the mayor of Miami and a good friend of the Hill. His city has developed the Miami Forever Climate Ready Strategy, which is designed to reduce the increasing risks of flood, heat, and storm impacts over the next 40 years. A big welcome to you both. Um, Mayor Gallego, I have uh, a little bit of history with, with Mayor Suarez. Where I, I thought he was a data mayor. Now he, I'm learning he's a climate mayor. Um, tell me what kind of mayor you are in Phoenix. What are your priorities? We are very focused on jobs, sustainability, and building a safe city. Uh, by background, I have an environmental undergraduate degree, so hopefully that will be useful for today's conversation and then an MBA. So trying to be focused on how do we build a more sustainable city with solutions that work. All right, is that, it, it, Mayor Gallego, you know, when it comes to the issue of sustainability, sustainability means a lot of different things. We've had a very wide aperture in that discussion here. Part of it is environmental. Part of it may deal with safety. Part of it may deal with the economics and jobs and resilience. You know, as you look at it and you talk to your citizens, you know, how do they, what, what priorities do they have in the sustainability uh, tent. Well, well the city us, is the. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. That, that was from. We'll, we'll, go to, we'll go to Phoenix and jump to Miami. Go ahead. Go ahead, Kate. Uh, so the city of Phoenix is the fastest growing city in the country and the fifth largest. That means we have to balance our current needs of our residents while building for the future. Uh, very much right now, we're talking about economic development, but how do we do it in a way that makes sense? from an energy perspective, from a water perspective. Mm. We also think that innovation is very much part of our city culture here. So we want to attract businesses in the circular economy where you're using what used to be waste as a feedstock for those businesses. And we've become a hub in that area. We're also very interested in the solar energy, more than 300 days of sun out here. And we want to harvest that. Wow. Well, thank, thank you for that. So, Mayor Suarez, the Miami Forever Climate Ready Strategy, MFCRS. I don't know if that works, MFRCS, but, but tell, tell us about MFRCS. Steve, first of all, it is uh, an honor to be on your show again. We've talked about so many issues that are so important to this country, uh, issues related to the elderly. And now we're talking about climate. I've been very blessed, uh, like Mayor Gallego, uh, the U.S. Conference of Mayors made me the a chair of the Environment Committee uh, a few years ago. Uh, I'm now on a global commission on adaptation. I'm the only mayor in the United States on that commission, not only one of two mayors in the world, the uh, mayor of Paris being the other that, that is on that with uh, uh, Secretary General Ban Ki-moon, a former Secretary General, uh, Christina Georgina from the IMF and Bill Gates. Uh, and our job is to make a sustainable world, to make a world that can adapt to whatever mother nature uh, throws at us. And of course, to do everything that we can to not make it any worse than what it is and to the extent possible reverse it and so in miami we came up with a strategy called miami forever and it's simple we want to make sure that miami is here for my children 
for my unborn grandchildren and for the generations to follow. So we've invested $200 million that we're hoping to leverage with our state and with our federal government, now with the American uh, Rescue Plan and also with the infrastructure plan that seems to be uh, coming right after that. And the hope is that we can leverage those dollars to make sure that Miami is the most water resilient city on the planet. We obviously have to deal with hurricanes, what mm. we call king tide floods, which is dr uh, dry day flooding and more uh, usual uh, than normal rainfall as well. You know, I, I, it, Francis, you know I've been a big fan of the Conference of Mayors and also various efforts to work with mayors for many, many years, whether the Bloomberg Foundation, City Lab, other things of this sort, and looking at like best and promising practices. So I know you folks get together and do show and tell. But as you know, we're talking to Phoenix, we're talking to Miami, you know, for, to both of you. Um, with the Biden infrastructure plan probably coming, some elements of it, what do you think Washington needs to hear when it comes to infrastructure bets that both of you need, but also kind of tying into your priorities in a way that work? Mayor Gallego? We would love to see Washington invest um, using something like the Community Development Block Grant formula and give cities pots of money to do what makes sense in their local community. Solar may make sense for us in Phoenix, whereas for another city, it may be wind energy. For us, we're building out our light rail system, and that's a way to take cars off the streets. But if we give cities a chance to do what makes sense, they can be laboratories of innovation and find the solutions that will power America. And Mayor, my understanding is that, that traditionally th those monies go directly to the state. This came up in our show yesterday, uh, and, and we had the mayor, mayors of Denver and Las Cruces, and say the best thing would help is give the money directly to the cities. Are you in agreement with that, 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 that going through the state creates an extra layer of complexity and indirectness? There's I no am doubt. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, both of you. Yeah. yeah Kate, uh, Kate, you first, and then we'll go to uh, Francis. All right, when you say mayor, you get two answers. Exactly. <laughs> but in a state like Arizona, we have actually had the highest temperature in the country and the lowest on the same day. So what works in our forested northern region may not work in Phoenix. We also have a very different attitude towards climate change than our state level. Uh, our state government passed a bill where they will not be studying climate change as part of regulatory processes. In Phoenix, we're doing climate action planning. We're actually even on our second round of a citywide climate action mm. plan. And so we have that attitude that we want to find the solutions. We think this is a problem. And I think cities really can lead the way. Thank you. Um, uh, Francis, I'd, I'd love to get your take on that too. Does it help to go directly to you as opposed through the state government? There's no doubt about it. I mean, I, mm. I can give you a comparison between the first CARES Act where uh, funds were only given uh, to cities directly if they had a population over 500,000. Miami had a population of 468,000. Had we been given funds based on population, we would have received $80 million. We actually ended up ultimately receiving 15. By contrast, in the American Rescue Plan, where it's being given to all cities over 50,000 directly from the federal government, we're going to be receiving $139 million, so 10 times more than we received under the CARES Act 1. So it is, without a doubt, uh, much better policy to give it directly to the cities. But to answer sort of your, your prior question a little right. bit, you know, I've looked through and combed through the infrastructure plan, and I have to say that the priorities of the bill are excellent. Um, I, uh, you know, I think it's redefining what infrastructure is, and I think it's, it's important that we take the opportunity now with this once-in-a-lifetime bill to redefine what infrastructure is. Infrastructure no longer is only you know, roads and bridges and, and, and the things and dams, the things that we've been accustomed to over the last few years. Now it's electric vehicle technology. Now it's a broadband. It's, it's a variety of other things that are going to propel and power the next generation of our economy. So, uh, you know, for me, one of the things that I'd like to see in terms of giving advice, and I've spoken to the Secretary of Transportation, uh, my good friend and our good friend, Pete Budicek, who was the mayor of South Bend, uh, Indiana, is we, I'd love to see instead of a, maybe a, a tax on corporations, I'd like to see a tax on carbon because I think uh, that's something that uh, as we trend, you know, transition into a carbon free world, uh, that's something that I think we need to promote. And, and, and that's something that I think has a lot of bipartisan support as well. Let me ask you just both um, a question. And, and I hadn't expected to ask this, but just listening to you both, and I know you both live in, in communities and states, it's hard to think of states more 
uh, purple than Florida and Arizona right now. Like you, you've got people on all sides of the equation. How do you talk to your communities across divides so that um, respect for climate, sustainability practices don't go the way that masks did the last um, year? Um, Mayor Gallego? Well, for us in this community, we are aligned across party lines that we don't want hotter summers in Phoenix. And so when we can talk about eat, that sometimes brings people together. So that works. I've also found yeah. that um, access to infrastructure like broadband makes good sense to people. And mm -hmm. we talk about uh, better using things that are being landfilled. There's a good conservative argument for avoiding waste, just as there is a good progressive argument. So I think if we choose the right focus, we can really bring people together. I, I love hearing that. I, you know, should move to D.C., Mayor Guy. No, I'm just joking. Uh, Mayor Suarez, what, what? I mean, I know. I mean, look, I, I, we know each other well, and I know that you do this all the time. But I do, I do think that there's a sort of need for um, language and a kind of, you know, coming together on some of these issues. You've done it in elder care. You've done it with smart cities. You've done it with startups. You've done it with resilience. And I'm okay. and and um, I'm just you know I'm, I always talk to everybody now about how to detoxify important climate. I really like uh, Kate Gallego's response, but but how do you approach it? Well, I remember reading uh, Frank Luntz's book, Words That Matter, and I mm. think uh, you know semantics matter. The way that you talk about things matters, and so to to piggyback off what Mayor Gallego was saying, um, you know, when you say things like flooding in Miami, everybody gets everybody understands that we have to have a flood free city. Uh, when you, if you talk about sea level rise, it gets a little bit contentious because there's sort of a political undertone to it. Uh, it doesn't particularly bother me, but it bothers some of, of my residents. So, so I think it just, it goes to how you talk about the issue when you make it an issue that everyone can agree on, uh, then it makes it a lot easier to get funding for it, to uh, help, uh, you know, create the kind of infrastructure that's going to, um, you know, create a premium quality of life for our residents. So I think for, for, for me, that's what I focus on. You have to also listen, um, you know, in politics uh, and in public service, we like to talk a lot, but uh, we rarely actually listen. And I think when you listen, uh, you can understand the nuances in different communities so you can uh, speak to them in a way that, that they can understand and that they can appreciate what you're trying to do. Francis, I know you've you've got to run, and and I want to talk to ask it one last question of uh, Mayor Gallegos. But um, I just add, get one more into you real quick. You know, it's looking more and more like Governor Ron DeSantis might might run for president in you know twenty twenty four. We don't know for sure, but you know a lot of a lot of you know Sally. Any interest in running for governor? Well, um, you know, he has a re-election in 22. Uh, I have a re-election in 21, and so which is this November. So I don't want to take that for granted. Um, obviously, the first thing you have to do is 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 take care of your your home accord, if you will, and and make sure that you get re-elected. And then I have the blessing, thanks to mayors like Mayor Gallego and others, of of becoming president of the U.S. Conference of Mayors in January of, of 2022. So I have my plate full. Um, 2024, 2026 is a long way away. Uh, so uh, w when we get there, Steve, you and I'll have a conversation about it for sure. Mayor Gallego, what I didn't hear from him was a no. <laughs> We'd be lucky. No. <laughs> He's been a great leader on the international stages, and, and certainly Florida would well, be lucky. Well, Francis to have Suarez, I know you got to run. Mayor of Miami, always great. Thank you so much. We're going to keep uh, Mayor Gallego Thanks, here Mayor. for, for a, an extra couple of minutes. Mayor Gallego, I want to ask you just just a technical thing because you know I want to have this not just about you know big meta topics, but. You know, you talked about solar and it was very compelling to kind of hear about, you know, the assets that Phoenix has and how it deploys. But it's it, it doesn't just happen. It requires, you know, permits and resources and partnerships. What do you need more of that you don't have to make the sustainability equation work? Um, can the federal government be a better partner in this? Um, I'm just sort of interested in do you is gravity taking us there without effort or do you need something that you don't have that you'd like to share with our audience? So I began my career working in the electric utility industry in solar, and wow. it's been amazing to see the changes just in my tenure. We at the city of Phoenix were putting in small three kilowatt projects. Now we're going to cut the ribbon on our 50th and we're talking multiple times larger. So it's been wonderful to see the cost curves come down. I, I do hope that we'll put a real emphasis on investing in research and development. In Phoenix, we would love to see more building integrated solutions where you can have solar on our buildings and that's helping generate energy right there that the buildings can use. 
we want to continue American leadership in solar. And so I think R&D would be helpful. The tax credits have been essential in Arizona in deploying solar and that federal partnership ought to continue as well. You know, yesterday I had Ken Miyagashima, who's the mayor of Las Cruces, New Mexico on. And I asked him, I said, what are we, what are our blind spots in this? And he made a very interesting point because he's also very pro solar and they're developing community solar farms, you know, for, for, for families and whatnot, they can't deploy it in their home, but they can have access, you know, to solar from other areas. But he said, you know, the Eastern part of the state, you know, Roswell, Carlsbad, others, are, are very important in the oil and gas picture of New Mexico. You also have a lot of oil and gas assets there. And, you know, there's a lot of um, um, efforts in the oil and gas industry as well to look at conservation, to better practices. You know, it's something we've included in this conversation. Is that also part of the, the Phoenix picture or is it is it all renewables for you? Well, we, in Arizona don't have as much oil and gas under Mm. our land as they do in New Mexico. But for us, um, we have looked at particularly alternative fuels. So uh, we are looking at biofuels. We actually Mm. have one of the largest fleets anywhere that that uses alternative fuels. And that has been helpful. Um, Electric vehicle deployment is something we're very excited about in the Biden infrastructure package. Mm. So we are looking at an all of above type of strategy. Well, fascinating. Well, Kate Gallego, mayor of Phoenix, I get there a lot. It's one of my favorite places. Uh, Thank you so much for joining us and sharing your your thoughts with us today. Wonderful. We will see you in your rec.